Jordan Spieth shot a first round 66 and is the leader after day one. He's the first player in Masters history to lead outright for five consecutive rounds. The last defending champion to hold the outright 18 hole lead was Jack Nicklaus in 1966. Good company who repeated as champion last year. Spieth set the record for best 36 hole and 54 hole scores and tied the best 72 hole score in Masters history. Skip, will Spieth go wire to wire again? Stephen, I, I'm, I'm going to attempt to seek and destroy this yeah, topic just for it, Molly's sake it. and just for your sake, because I don't know if I can live up to that, but I'm going to try. I do not think that Jordan Spieth will go wire to wire. I thought he basically, and he, as he pretty much admitted after the round yesterday, I thought he stole that 66 from Augusta National yesterday. He got away with a 66 that he should not have gotten away with. And I'm going to remind you, as much as I like Jordan Spieth, he has struggled all year leading up to this Masters, except for the season opening tournament in Hawaii, the Tournament of Champions that he won. But ever since then, he is down statistically in every category across the board compared to last year. So I think, ironically, after the, the year that he had last year when he was all-time great in the four majors, he, he was in contention in all four, obviously won the first two, I think there was little... There, there, let's say it this way. There was less pressure on a defending champion coming into this Masters because, by his standards, he struggled of late. And then yesterday, let's go to number 11. He hits it way right in the pine trees. He's on the pine straw. And against his caddy's better judgment, Jordan Spieth says, I'm going to go for it. It was Mickelson-esque. It was crazy nuts. It was near disastrous because he took a four iron from 210 yards with a narrow opening in the pine trees and missed the shot. He said, I hit it fat. And somehow it went right through the opening and somehow it curled around the bend at number 11. There's a pond in front of the, the green and it hung up in the fringe it could have been double triple bogey disaster right there on number 11 now let's fast forward to number 16 can be a very difficult hole it was the undoing of my guy that I picked to win the, the tournament Jason Day he tripled it yesterday Jordan Spieth looked like he shanked his shot he it looked like he hit it in the hosel and pushed it so far right it was like a duffer shot and it hung up in the hillside above the green to the right now he's chipping downhill a down grain on a glassy green toward the water and he, he leaves it maybe 15 feet from the hole which is really a good shot and made the par putt he took only 25 putts in 18 holes yesterday so if my math is correct that means he one putted 11 times 11 greens he needed only one putt well that's stealing at augusta national in the wind and they say the wind's going to be at least as tricky today I think he might come back to earth today, wake up today and say, wow, I got away with that one yesterday. I probably won't get away with it that way today. And I think the wind will start playing tricks with his mind. And I think he will come back to the pack. Well, Skip, I didn't see much of it yesterday. I did see Ernie Earl shoot like a 10 oh, on the first Lord hole for crying mercy. out loud. Mr. Yeah, Three foot putt. He was an absolute disaster. He was an absolute disaster yesterday. We all know that. I look at Jason Day, like you said, he couldn't keep pace. You know, he, he bogey. You look at Day as well. I, I just, I, I'm sorry, Rory McIlroy. Yep. Uh, I, I just look at him, he bogey two of the last three he holes. Did. I just think it's one of those situations where Spieth being ahead, Spieth being ahead, and now, like I said, I wasn't going to watch too much yesterday. I'll be watching it this weekend, though. But I look at Spieth being ahead with the wicked win. My attitude is this, Skip. He knows how to win on this course. Just he like he was saying, he and yeah. his team, they prepped for this. He knows how to win here. So the fact that he starts off strong, and you take into account the relative inconsistency on a part of Day and Rory McIlroy, when the L's of the world and others can't seem to keep pace, the win's not going to get any better today. I suspect that Spieth is going to get ahead, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he's able to hold on. But it's almost by default because the guys that you're relying upon to make those comebacks, there's nothing that McElroy has shown you that tells you that he can come back even though he's on the record saying it ain't over. He thinks he can come back and he can catch speed. Day is obviously being inconsistent as well. And like you said, the win is going to continue to be wicked. So the combination of all of those things says to me that Spieth, who has done this already, knows what it takes, knows this course, obviously worked under arduous circumstances and was able to overcome the hump, get over the hump rather, yesterday. I think he'll continue to do so. I don't think anybody else will catch him, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if he got another green jacket.
Well, th that means you think he's going to go wire to wire for a second straight year. If, if he pulls that off, yes. it would be all time extraordinary. And my only problem, you, I, you know, think, Jordan, I think he's going to pull it off. Yeah. Jordan Spieth seems like a really good kid. I don't know him, but he seems from from what I gather, a really good kid from Dallas, Texas. But he is so far from Tiger Woods. It's a joke. And I mean, in, in a golf context, because it appears that Jordan Spieth does nothing great. There's nothing sensational. There's nothing electrifying about any part of his game unless the putter gets hot. Last year was hot from like 25 feet where he made lots of 25 footers. He actually had a hard time last year making five foot par putts. So to me, I, I've always thought that Jason Day was made of a little stronger stuff than Jordan Spieth. I could be wrong about that, but I thought that Jason Day, yeah. I know he's from Australia, but had the best chance to fill some of the Tiger void, to be as the, 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 the closest to Tiger of this group. Well, that's a different subject. I'm just talking about this right here, this Masters, and I'm saying you drop five shots in three holes, I can't trust you. Well, you know, you, you're, hey. you're a McElroy. You pull within two shots, and then you I, bogey twice hey. on, a, you know, on, on, hey. on the last three holes. I, I can't trust you. Not, not for this weekend. That's all I'm saying. Okay, it was just one round, but we could have had one of the all-time great first-round leaderboards in Masters history because it looked like for a while we were going to go Spieth, Day, and Rory mm -hmm. at the top. And as you say, the wind seemed to wear out the other two. They finally just sort of fell apart at the end. And it was pretty shocking to me. But I think that Jason Day will fight back into the middle of this. Okay, we'll see. Speed, very we'll see. impressive. I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. this is Speed's. Except for yes. one thing, he's a Cowboys fan. Yeah, he's a Tony Romo guy. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, I don't on. like him now. Yeah, yeah me either. Him. I'm yeah. over him. Go Jason Day. I just told guys in the chat, you know, if you need a rest, take the rest. Um, and if you don't, we're going after it. And so um, I think it's a, it can be tough, you know, depending on how you want to look at it. And uh, most guys in the locker room are saying, hey, we, we right here. We put all this effort in. Let's try to go for it. I think our priority tonight was about how we played it. I mean, we obviously wanted to win, and that uh, is important to us. But how we play these next three games leading into the playoffs, is how we focus on the big goal. And in, in the process, if we get three wins, that'd be great. I'm inclined to uh, give some guys a rest if they need it. But I've, I've also, um, you know, sort of made a pact with, with the, the guys that if they're not tired, if they're not banged up, and they want to go for this record or whatever, then so we got to talk. First Take is brought to you by Panera Bread, food as it should be, and Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Two games for the Warriors this weekend against the Spurs and Grizzlies. So what will their record be after this weekend, Stephen A? I'm going to say 3-0. and oh. Um, I, I said that they would capture the record. Um, I'm very, very worried about Sunday night's encounter against San Antonio. Uh, but I'm going to stick to my guns and say they're going to break this record, 73, 73 and 9. Okay. I, I got 72 and 9 after Sunday night. I, I just have my doubts about LaMarcus Aldridge being able to play Sunday night in San Antonio against Golden State. I'll give them two more wins. Just two. And yeah. then we'll see what you say we'll on see. Monday. We'll yeah. see if they're still chasing it. Thank you, everybody. Happy birthday, Sabino, our researcher. We appreciate you. We'll see you all on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend.